Holloway jumps out of his comfortable bed and opens the door quickly. When he does, he finds Rosie standing right at the door with tears running down her grim face. Surprisingly, no one else is awake yet, as the hallway is completely empty and the lights still remain off. What happened? Rosie composes herself before answering. She wipes away some of her tears with the sleeve of her white work shirt. I, I don't know. I went to check in on Mr. Hildington, and he, he was lying there. I thought he was just asleep, but he wasn't breathing. More tears stream out of Rosie's eyes. Holloway hugs Rosie and pats her on the back. Thank you. Do any of the others know about Hildington? No, it's just you and me. All right. Well, let's keep it that way until we examine the crime scene. Got it? Rosie nods. Holloway and Rosie head down the stairs swiftly and reach Hildington's room. Holloway carefully opens the door and takes in the scene. Hildington is lying peacefully in his bed with the covers up to his neck. His eyes are closed and his hair is tidy. His room appears to be untouched. Holloway walks up, careful not to disturb anything, and puts his ear on Hildington's chest. Damn it. He's gone. Rosie's tears begin to flow a little more again as she looks away from the bed. Holloway notices Hildington's open mouth and sniffs just above it. He was poisoned. Rosie hears Holloway, but doesn't respond. Holloway begins to evaluate the room searching for any detail the killer might have left. To Holloway's dismay, he doesn't find anything. You may as well wake up everyone. Upstairs, everyone's standing in the hallway in a circle. Uva yawns and rubs her eyes. Everyone's mostly tired, except for Juliet and Alexa, who seem to have a good night's rest. Everyone is still in their nighttime clothes. Walt looks a little hungover. Juliet notices Rosie's tears. Juliet looks around, noticing Hildington appears to be missing. Where's Mr. Hildington? Oh my god. No. No! What? Hildington's dead. I must have misheard you. I thought you said Mr. Hildington's dead. You heard correctly. I'm sorry, but he's dead. <laughs> I know this is tough for everyone, but I'm going to need to interrogate all of you. Starting with you, Eric. Waltz unclasps his hands and nods. Holloway leads him to his room and closes his door. Inside Holloway's room, he drags a table out toward the center. Next, he sets up two chairs, both sitting across from each other. He then motions for Waltz to have a seat. Waltz does so and Holloway takes the other. Now Eric, tell me everything that you did last night, starting from when we left the sitting room. All right. Well, I left the room with the others at about... Was it 10.30? You tell me. Right. Hmm. Yes, it must have been 10.30. After that, I was in my room for about an hour. Then I went to the bathroom and... And? Well, I threw up in the toilets. I may have drank a tad too much. You think? This has all been hard for me. You must understand, my escape is found through, well, alcohol. Perhaps you'd be willing to find a different escape. Perhaps. All right. How long were you in the bathroom? No more than ten minutes. After that, I went to bed. Now, did you hear anything or wake up at all? I'm a heavy sleeper, but before I fell asleep, I heard a door open. Whose door was it? Why, it must have been... Miss Gregorovich's! Yes, I do believe it was! That's the final piece of the puzzle, isn't it? Uva's guilty! Holloway sits back and thinks about this. He looks at his notes and carefully looks at the diagram of the hallway and its rooms he's drawn. He sees that Uva's room is right by Waltz's and believes that it's possible. It's clear that Uva did it! Don't you want it to be her? As much as I dislike Uva, I must look at all the clues, not just one. Imagine an incomplete puzzle. Without all of the pieces, the picture isn't 100% clear. Yes, but you can guess at what the picture is without all of the pieces. Yes, but this puzzle needs more pieces than we currently have. Now, Eric, do you remember anything else that happened last night? 
I think I might have heard a suitcase open, but other than that, no. A suitcase? That's what I thought it was, at least. I could be wrong. All right. Thank you, Eric. You're free to go. Oh, would you send in LaCroix for me? Of course. Have a seat. LaCroix sits down where Waltz once was. Holloway studies LaCroix for a moment. He notices that LaCroix has black circles underneath his eyes. Rough night? LaCroix doesn't respond. Instead, he just looks at Holloway. Didn't get much sleep? Yes. Were you two keyed up from killing Hildington? Excuse me? You heard me. Are you saying that I killed Hildington? I don't know, did you kill him? Of course not! Then can you explain to me why you didn't get much sleep? I'd reckon that the killer was up all night preparing for the kill and possibly was even nervous. If the murderer left a single clue and I found it, well, it'd be trouble for them. I am not the murderer. Despite everyone's dislike of me, Hildington happened to be fond of me. Was he now? That is correct. Did he like you enough that he would give you his estate? Or perhaps his money? No, he was fond of us. But he's got a nephew. If I had to guess, I'd say it all goes to him. I see. You know, it's convenient that your knife was used to kill Armstrong, as well as the fact that you show signs of sleeplessness. You do seem the nervous type as well. For the last damn time! It was not me! Then tell me, why didn't you get any sleep? I... <clears throat> yes? Well, uh, after seeing Juliet and Alexa in love, it reminded me when I was like that. Happy and in love. Explain. <sighs> A year before I started working with Hildington, I was married to my wife. <sighs> Heaver. Everything was just perfect until uh, she, she was hit by a car. The little shit wasn't looking at Heater paid for it. She didn't make it. After that, I quit my job and uh, became a raging alcoholic. Thankfully, uh, Harold pulled me out of the fire and he got me a job for Hildington. I mean, why would I kill Hildington? He set my life on a better path. I see. Now, tell me. What did you do last night after we left the sitting room? I don't remember seeing you leave with us. I stayed there for a little bit, uh, remembering old times. And then I went up to my room. I didn't leave until this morning when Rosie woke me up. Did you hear anything last night? No, I wasn't paying attention. Alright, thank you. You may leave now. Could you send in Rosie? LaCroix gets out of his chair and nods. He leaves the room and soon after, Rosie enters. Rosie still looks distraught from finding out the horrid news. Holloway gets out of his chair. Miss Chin. Rosie does a sort of half smile and Holloway gestures her to take a seat. She does so without hesitation and Holloway follows suit. Holloway picks up his pencil and looks at Rosie. Miss Chen, if you would please tell me what you did after we left that sitting room. You were talking with Elmers, correct? Yes, that's right. After that, we sort of, well, had sex. Pardon? Yes, uh, Harold and I finally hit it off. Mm, about time, too. Uh, did you ever go out of your room last night? No, I stayed in Harold's room the whole night. Did Elmers ever leave the room? I'm not sure, but I don't think he did. Did you hear any weird noises? Well... Not weird, but I heard two doors being opened. That's about it, though. Two doors? Were these doors opened near the same time? No, I think one was opened and then the other a little later. Are you sure that it wasn't a door closing the second time? Positive. What does this mean? There are a couple of things that I could mean. One more severe. What would that be? Two murderers. I'm sorry, did you just say? That's right, two murderers. But it's only a theory. Jesus Christ. Just when I thought things couldn't get worse. You were close to Hildington, yes? Yes. 
We often talked while I cleaned for him. I've been in his service for three years, same as the rest of us. Well, except for Harold and Alexa. Harold's been here longer, and Alexa's been here the shortest. Did he have any family? The only person I know from his family is his nephew. His parents died years ago, and he inherited their fortune and this mansion. They both died at the same time? Yeah, it was some freak accident or something. He never talks about it, though. Don't you find that weird? Well, I never really thought about it. But it is a little weird, but Mr. Hildington's a good man. Hildington's keeping secrets, even from beyond the grave. <laughs> Are you suggesting that Mr. Hildington is a murderer? He'd never! He's a kind and understanding man. Do you know why Alexa's shy about her sexuality? Her previous employer punished her for it! Mr. Hildington's been more than understanding with her, as well as all of us. The Crow was a raging alcoholic, but instead of kicking him out, Mr. Hildington let him stay, and Harold's been helping him. Harold himself has been helped by him. Harold is an abusive victim, and Mr. Hildington and I have been helping him through it. Even I was helping, helped by him. After my mother died, my life was ruined. He gave me a chance to turn my life around. If it weren't for him, I probably would have committed suicide. I don't appreciate you disrespecting him, Mr. Holloway. I'm sorry, you're right. Mr. Hildington was a great man, and he'll be missed. I was only thinking out loud, I apologize. I'm sorry as well for yelling at you. It's just... It's been... It's all right. You can go now, Miss Chen. Send in Elizabeth after you, please. Rosie gets up and smiles at Holloway, and then leaves. As Elizabeth walks in, she moves a strand of her hair out of her face. Mrs. Harding, you may have a seat. Now, after everyone left the sitting room last night, what did you do? Let's see. I went up to my room to do a little writing, and then went to bed. Did you ever awake and go out of your room? Why, yes. I went downstairs to go get water. At what time did you do this? I'd say... about 12.30. Why did you go downstairs to get water? There's two sinks upstairs. What can I say? I was half asleep. I see. Did you see anyone else out and about when you went to get water? No, I did not. Did you hear any noises last night? Well, I heard a door open next to me last night at about 12. Whose door would that be? Uva's, I think. Did you know Mr. Hildington before this? Yes. We met at a party a while back, but we didn't really talk afterwards. Did you know anything about the death of Hildington's parents? What's that got to do with anything? Okay. Well, no. I didn't even know that they were dead. Do you have any relations with the late Mr. Armstrong? No. I never even got the chance to speak with him. I've noticed that you are really reserved and prefer to keep to yourself. Yes. I comment on things here and there, but I do prefer to keep to the background. You also said that you believed that Hildington was the mastermind behind Armstrong's murder. What do you think now? Why do you want to know what I think? Just wondering. Well, what if one of his staff didn't want to do his biddings? So, they killed him? Who do you think that'd be? If I had to guess, Lacrosse seems the most likely. And why is that? He just seems like a killer to me. Interesting. Do you think this is the end of the murders? I sure hope so. All of this panic is fraying my nerves. All right, well, that is all. Unless there's something you wanted to tell me? Nothing at all. Very well. Please send in Miss Scriber for me. The door opens and in walks Juliet, who still has an expression of sorrow on her face. Miss Scriber, thank you for coming. Of course. Miss Scriber, how long have you been working for Bernard? About three years. I came when LaCroix and Rosie were hired. The others mentioned that Mr. Hodington helped them through rough experience. Uh, does the same go for you? No. But he did fill a void in my life. A void? 
My father died when I was seven, and Mr. Hildington became a father to me. You must be heartbroken that he's gone. Yes. I... I don't know what we'll do without him. Speaking of that topic, are you familiar with his will? You are his secretary, right? Yes, I am. He never made a will, as far as I know. You've dealt with a lot of his personal life, correct? Yes. I probably know more about him than the rest of the staff. Except maybe Harold. What can you tell me about his family? He comes from old money, and he inherited the family fortune when his parents died. How did they die, exactly? They were killed in a house fire. Luckily, Mr. Hildington wasn't in the house at that time. Didn't that strike you as odd? A little, yes. But he explained that his guardian angel was looking out for him that day. Holloway nods, but is unconvinced. The only family he has is his nephew, right? Yes. They get together every six months to check up. But they're not very close. Has Hildington had any wives or girlfriends? He had a couple. But none all that recently. <laughs> What's so funny? I was just remembering his last girlfriend, Chloe. The first time they kissed, Mr. Hildington got makeup all over him. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, now I need to know about what you did last night. Of course. I figured you'd be asking sooner or later. After we announced that we were engaged, Alexa and I went back to our room and talked for a little bit. What did you talk about, if it's not too personal? The future, mainly. We're thinking about getting a house out in the country and living a peaceful life. As much as she loves gardening, it's very tiring. My job is tiring, too. I, I plan out all of Mr. Hildington's events, as well as do his taxes, write letters, and so on and so forth. Sounds like a marvelous idea, moving out to the country. Yes, I, I really hope we do. Especially after all of this. After you finish talking, what then? Well, Alexa took a bath and I went to bed. I woke up this morning when Rosie came into our room. When you were asleep, did you hear anything? Well, aside from Alexa snoring, I heard three doors open. Three doors? Yes, but they weren't in unison. Doors one and two opened about 15 minutes apart, and door three opened about 10 minutes after that. I actually went to see who was getting up the third time. And who would that be? Harold. Did you see where he was going? I believe it was downstairs. I'm not so sure. All right, thanks, Miss Scriber. That'll be all. Please send in Mr. Elmers. No problem. This case gets more and more diluted. Elmers walks in with the same sorrow-filled face everyone seems to have. He's still a little in shock from finding out about Hildington. Mr. Elmers, have a seat. Thank you. Thank you for agreeing to do this. I'm sure that this must be hard for you. No trouble at all. How would it look if I were to refuse? Very bad, I'd say. Very bad indeed, sir. You left your room around midnight last night. Was that a question, sir? It was a statement, because I know it to be true. Where did you go? Pardon? Where did you go, Mr. Elmers? Well... Yes? Elmers looks down at the table, attempting to avoid Holloway's eyes. I went to Mr. Hildington's room. Holloway looks a little surprised at that remark. He notes that Elmers begins to sweat a little and he has an expression of growing nervousness. Why did you do that? I wanted to check on him, make sure that everything was okay. Do you usually do this? No. Then why did you do it last night? It's pretty convenient that you went to check on him the night he's murdered. I swear, it wasn't me. Tell me why you entered his room. I had a premonition. A premonition? Of what? That Mr. Hildington was going to die. Well, Mr. Amers, you were correct. You spent the night with Miss Chen, correct? Yes, uh, Rosie and I... No need to explain. I find it weird that she never mentioned you leaving the room. She's a sound sleeper, I guess. I'd believe you if she didn't already hear two of the three doors being opened last night. Why did she lie to me? I doubt that she wouldn't have heard her own door open if she heard the other two. She was just trying to protect me. She's also disrupting my investigation. Did you happen to see anyone else last night? Just a woman. Who would that be? I'm not a hundred percent certain. 
but I think it was Uva. On what grounds? Well, I recognized the smell of her perfume, and the shadowy figure looked feminine. What did you do after you noticed this person? I watched them for a little bit and then went back to my room. You don't think that was the killer, do you? It's possible. Did this person notice you? I don't know, but they went outside when I started to head back to the room. Is there anything else I need to know? Not that I could think of. And that's all I need to know from you. Thank you, Mr. Elmers. You are free to go. Please send in Alexa after you. Don't you want to hear from Uva? Oh, I definitely do. I'm just saving her for last. The door to Holloway's room opens and Alexa walks out. She carefully closes the door and goes to find the only person who hasn't been interrogated. Uva Gregorovich. She knocks on Uva's door. If it's the murderer, kill me after breakfast. I'm not dying on an empty stomach. <laughs> Uva laughs a little at her joke. Alexa opens the door to find Uva looking in a mirror, putting on her makeup. Oh, it's you. What do you want? It's your turn, ma'am. What? <clears throat> it, it's your turn, ma'am. Nate wants to see me? Yes. Tell him I'm making myself look pretty. I'm sure he'll appreciate it. Alexa thinks something in her head, but doesn't think it would be wise to say it out loud. He said he needed to see you now, ma'am. Ugh, <sighs> fine. You know, dear, you could use a little touch of makeup yourself. You look a little, well, unattractive this morning. I'm sure your little gay friend would like it if you put some on now, wouldn't she? Uva brushes past Alexa as Alexa grows a little red with anger. Uva walks to Holloway's room and opens the door. Miss Grigorovich. Without being asked to, Uva takes a seat and looks at Holloway. If you wanted to have me to yourself, you just had to ask Nate. I'm sorry to say, but this isn't very romantic. Holloway rolls his eyes. What did you do last night? Well, I can tell you one thing I didn't do. Just tell me what you did do. I don't remember seeing you in the sitting room. Couldn't be bothered. I just sat up in my room doing stuff. What sort of stuff? Planning Hildington's death, of course. <laughs> I've had just about enough of you, Uva. This is a serious investigation. Two people have been murdered, and the murderer is still among us. You're the most suspicious person right now, so I suggest you straighten up. You're right. I'm sorry, Nate. I just... Just tell me what you were doing. Right. Well, I read for a little bit. I've been reading this great romance book. I think you might like it. Just continue. After a bit, I heard all of you go back to your rooms, and I figured it was time for me to get some rest. I heard some weird noises. I think the maid and the butler were going at it. She could do better than him. What time did you leave your room? How did you know about that? You have a witness. Well, if I do, then you must know I'm not responsible. Why even bother interrogating me? My witness saw you leaving the house, and they left soon after. They never saw you go back in, and they didn't know what you did afterwards. You've got to be shitting me. Do you really think I'd kill that fool? Sure, I didn't trust the bastard, but I'd never go that far. Says you. Nate, don't you trust me? No, Uva, I don't. You've caused nothing but trouble while you've been here. Now, why did you leave the manor? To get fresh air, of course. I went on a walk. When I came back, I went back up to my room and I went back to bed. Did you see anyone while you were back in the manor? Not a soul. Look, I didn't kill Hildington. Come on, Nate. Just trust me for once. Just go, Uva. Uva walks to the stairs and as she does, LaCroix is seen walking to Juliet and Alexa's room. He knocks on the door. Who is it? It's me, Jacques. What do you want? Look, uh, I wanted to apologize to the both of you. You embarrassed Alexa, you know. I don't appreciate you getting in our private business. That was very rude of you. I know, I know. Look, could you get Alexa here too, please? I'd like to apologize to her too. <sighs> All right. Juliet goes back into the room, and a couple of seconds later, they both come to the door. LaCroix gives a brief smile, but stops when he sees the look on Alexa's face. Look, what I did was perverted and wrong, and uh, I feel really guilty for it. My life hasn't been the same since... Uh, <clears throat> since Heaver, my wife. 
Alexa, you were a rare flight in my life. And I thought I might fall in love again, but... But, well, you had Juliet. I haven't been with a woman in three years. You've got to understand. I really shouldn't have looked, but... It's alright. We've all known each other for years, and I'd say that we're all family. We'll look past this incident, but if it happens again... Of course. Thanks for understanding. Juliet smiles too, and they both give LaCroix a hug. Just then, Holloway opens his door and walks out, notebook in his other hand. He closes the door behind him and notices LaCroix, Alexa, and Juliet. Holloway walks up to them. I'm holding a meeting in the dining room. I'd like everyone there. Have you figured out who it is? You'll see. Just be there. In the dining room, everyone is standing around the table. Everyone's both excited and a little nervous as to what Holloway is about to say. Uva looks the most nervous of them all. Thank you all for complying, everyone. Thanks to all of you, this process has been mostly smooth. Now, it's time for my side of the story. Unfortunately, it's not very exciting, but here it is. Last night after Walt's story, I went straight to bed. I never left my room. Now that that's taken care of, let's get down to business. All of you have given me pieces to the puzzle that seemed to mesh well. First was the fact that two doors were open near the same time, but as it turns out, three were open last night. I have a list of suspects that seem most likely to have committed this murder. The problem is, there's not enough evidence to determine who exactly it was. In fact, there's no clear evidence as to if both murders are connected or not. There must be though, right? I don't know. Oh, come now, you're a detective. And you are telling me that you still don't have a clear-cut answer yet? I do not. I need more evidence. And while you're gathering evidence, another person could die. I understand this, but if I guess wrong, there could be another murder anyways. Detective work takes time, Mr. LaCroix. Perhaps you'd like to do my job for me then. Alright, I think I know who did it. I think we all do. It was Uva Gregorovich. Everyone looks at Uva, and Uva looks a little shocked. You have no proof. You hated Ellington! It'd be no surprise to me if you killed him! Calm down, Gracroy. We don't have enough evidence to narrow it down to one person. Whatever. Now, I need to search all of your rooms for evidence. I'd like for all of you to wait downstairs until the search is complete. Of course. You're all free to go. Thank you for your time. Everyone makes for the door. The door is opened and everyone walks out. Uva waits by the door for Holloway, and as LaCroix walks past her, Uva glares at him. Holloway's the last person to come out. He closes the door behind him and turns around. He's a little surprised to see Uva standing right there. Nate, I just wanted to thank you for standing up for me. Look, I know you probably hate me, but thanks. LaCroix shouldn't have blamed you. Innocent until proven guilty. You know that I wouldn't do this, right? We'll see about that. Hey, Liz, why don't we try to forget about all of this nasty business and go for a swim? What do you say? Well, I've got nothing better to do. Sure. Elizabeth and Uva walk off and LaCroix heads for the bathroom with a stereo in his hands. He looks outside and sees Elmers, Rosie, Alexa, Juliet, and Waltz talking in the garden. He closes the curtain and moves on. Meanwhile, Holloway is examining each and every room being careful to not miss a single piece of evidence. Elizabeth and Uva knock on the open door and Holloway turns around. Do you mind if we quickly grab our swimsuits? Sure, but I'll have to watch you grab them. Make sure you don't grab anything else. You understand, right? Of course. Holloway follows Uva and Elizabeth to Uva's room. Elizabeth stands outside and waits as Uva digs through her suitcase, looking for her swimsuit. I know it's here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Uva holds up her swimsuit and Holloway motions her to get out of the room. They continue on to Elizabeth's room, and Elizabeth quickly grabs her suit and they walk off, but Holloway stays by the room. Thanks, Nate. Holloway goes back to searching through the rooms. He gets to Juliet and Alexa's room. In there, he stumbles upon a bag with pills in them. He examines them closer and wonders if he's possibly found the murder weapon. Holloway pockets them and continues investigating. Back downstairs, LaCroix is soaking in a bath and music is blaring from the nearby stereo. Outside, Uva and Elizabeth are by the door that leads to the pool. I think I'll get dressed in the bathroom upstairs. I'll take the other one down here. Alright, I'll meet you out at the pool. 
Elizabeth heads back up towards the stairs just as Holloway walks down the stairs and makes his way towards Hildington's study. He finds that the door is unlocked and begins to search the room. He notices Hildington's desk and the fact that there are pieces of paper on it. Holloway walks over and searches through the papers. Holloway stops when he finds Hildington's will. He knew he was going to die. Holloway stops and thinks on this for a little. He remembers that his car and Elizabeth's are still outside and decides to check them for evidence. He walks out of the study and goes to the front door. He opens it and closes it behind him. In the downstairs bathroom, LaCroix is still in the bath, relaxing and enjoying the moment. He smiles as he hums along with the music blasting from the stereo. The music is so loud, in fact, that he doesn't hear the door open. In fact, he doesn't even see the door open because his eyes are closed. A figure walks into the room, but no discernible details can be seen, except for a knife in a black gloved hand. The hand with the knife moves to LaCroix's throat and quickly slashes it. LaCroix's eyes shoot open and is about to cry out in pain, but the hand shoots up and covers his mouth. LaCroix tries to fight back, but he's already lost a lot of blood. The light in his eyes begin to fade as the bathwater gets more and more red. The killer puts the knife in LaCroix's hands in order to make it look like suicide is a possibility. The killer walks out of the bathroom and closes the door. Outside the mansion, Holloway sees that his car has been trashed. He runs up to it and inspects the damage. He quickly realizes that his gun might have been taken and opens the door. He rips through his glove box, hoping it's still there. To his dismay, it's gone. Son of a bitch! Holloway stands there for a second and realizes that he never found his gun anywhere in the house. He tries to think of places he didn't search when he looks over and sees Elizabeth's car. He notices that it's in the same condition that his is in and walks over to it. He looks through the car thoroughly, but is out of luck. Holloway sighs and stares at the ground. Outside, Uva and Elizabeth are swimming in the pool, and the others are talking to each other not too far away. Everyone's trying to forget all of the murders for just a moment, but the dark cloud still looms over them. Elmers quickly realizes something. Where's Jacques? What? Where's Jacques? I haven't seen him in a couple of hours. You don't think? Come on, we'll search the manor. He's got to be there somewhere, right? Nobody answers and they run to the manor. They all search for the manor. Suddenly, Waltz and Elmers come upon the bathroom LaCroix was in. They listen and hear the music. Jacques! Jacques, are you in there? Elmers opens the door and they see the grotesque scene inside. Oh my god! Oh! 